Hello everyone, uh, welcome back. This is Balu here again. Today we are going to look into part 2 of uh, requirement engineering process and the section we are going to deal today is called as requirements management. I will uh, quickly take you through the uh, session objectives. Now we are going to deal with uh, requirements evolution and later on we will uh, uh, focus our attention on requirements management plan and also requirements change management. Now uh, in the earlier video we have seen what a requirement engineering process is. Now I had explained to you that uh, requirement engineering process had got two stages, main stages. One is called the requirements development and the second one is called as the requirements management. Now the requirements development in turn had got four sub stages. They were called as elicitation, analysis, specification and verification and I had explained to you what these individual stages mean. Uh, if you have not seen that video, I would prefer you to go back and see my uh, earlier part of your my requirements engineering process video. Now today we are going to deal with uh, requirements management. Now what is uh, requirement uh, management? It is a process of understanding and controlling changes to the system requirements. Now uh, as I told you the changes to the system are inevitable which means once you have developed an application and once that application or a software product is operational there could be changes happening to that particular application. The changes could be given by the customer once the software is operational or even sometimes the changes can happen even during the development of the system. So requirements management is actually a continuous activity, we should note that. It is not an activity which starts after some stage and stops after another stage, it is a continuous activity. So it is also an umbrella activity which means which happens uh, throughout the system and it should start as soon as SRS draft is made available. So once you have actually created the software requirement specification draft, automatically your requirements management process must start. Now uh, just have a look at this uh, particular figure here. Now uh, there is a requirement of a computer system to be developed. Now I told you that if I want to develop a computer system or if I want to develop a software system, uh, you need to have stakeholders identified and all stakeholders will start giving us the requirements. So we have a uh, list of uh, stakeholders which are mentioned here who are executive users. They supply some requirements, external users, they give some requirements. Business users give some requirements, client give some requirements, technical staff will give certain requirements. So basically each uh, stakeholder will have their own set of requirements and all these requirements are actually taken into account uh, before we actually go ahead with the software deliverable. Now one thing you need to understand here very clearly is the definition of a stakeholder. I have already explained this definition before. A stakeholder is a person or a group of people or an organization who are affected by the project. In this case, if you actually develop and implement this uh, project, external users will be affected because they are going to be affected in the way they are going to do their day-to-day -day job. Similarly, you know, the executive users are also going to be affected. So all these uh, people who are actually shown in this picture, they are going to be affected in one way or the other after implementing this particular system. Now uh, there is a concept called evolution of requirements. Now what do you mean by evolution? Evolution is nothing but induction or you know the growth of requirements or evolution could also be sometimes called as introduction of requirements. Now how do you define this? In induction of new requirement that can happen during requirement engineering process or after system installation. Be very clear about this. Now requirements can come at any time. You already have a set of requirements and you are actually working on the development of those set of requirements into a software module. Suddenly a new requirement can creep in. So we can say evolution of requirement has happened. Or let's take a classical example where all the requirements have been gathered properly. You have converted that requirements into a software module and the software is now operational. Once the people are the end user who are actually working on that particular software may identify a problem or they could find a sense of 
change in the management policy where they need to actually make some small changes or even major changes in the system. So they will supply a new set of requirements. Then we say that the evolution of requirements has happened. Okay. Now if you want me to give an uh, real example where exactly we can use evolution of requirements. Uh, we can say Vastu. Now Vastu has uh, you know picked up uh, very much in this current uh, world. So Vastu is a solid example of evolution of requirements. That is generally uh, you will have your house built okay and you may face some problems in the house and you would basically talk to your Vastu, Vastu consultant. The Vastu consultant will look into the Vastu policies and procedures and he will make you to uh, he will suggest you to make some changes to the house. Now once he suggests to make you to make you some changes into that particular house then what exactly is happening is the requirements are basically evolving that means new new requirements are coming which means you may have to uh, sometimes change the dimension of a particular bedroom or you may have to actually demolish a wall and construct a new wall or you may have to actually change certain things okay inside the house and that is called as evolution of an requirement okay now how do you diagrammatically represent this evolution of requirements now initially you have you have an initial understanding of a problem okay the initial understanding of the problem is the problem what you have initially understood now from that problem you had an initial set of requirements what you basically got now uh, the software product has been realized and after some time when the software is being operational there is a changed understanding of problem that means when people are the end users who are operating that particular software identifies that there needs to be a, some change in this particular process or there could be an organizational change or there could be a change in the strategy of business so that means there could be some change in the problem which basically gives rise to evolution of changed requirements so evolution of requirements can happen either during the execution of the project or after the completion of the project and when the project or the system is in the maintenance mode or it is in the operational mode now depending upon the requirements evolution we can classify requirements into two categories the first one is called the enduring requirements and the second one is called as a volatile requirements so what are enduring requirements enduring requirements are stable requirements are very generic requirements which are actually needed to run the show whereas volatile requirements are likely to change during system development or after the system has become operational now let us take an example of an atm machine now when you take atm machine there are two kinds of requirements for atm machine one is an enduring requirement and the second one is called as a volatile requirement so what is an enduring requirement of an atm machine general requirements any atm basically should have a facility to swipe the card any atm should have a facility called a screen which will basically capture the pin number of the card holder any atm should basically have a vent where it can actually dispense the cash to a customer or it should also have a user interface where the customer can change his personal details now these are called as enduring requirements and the atm could also have a backup facility that is one of the requirement where in case the power supply fails then the backup should be able to supply the power so that the atm is up and running now what are volatile requirements now what happens if the power fails and if the battery charge is also discharged then the atm goes for a shutdown so the government comes with a policy stating that the atm should never shut down it should actually work 24 hours a day and 365 days a year that means in that case you may have to have a requirement where you need to have a secondary backup apart from the primary backup where you may have an inverter you may have to have a secondary inverter at the same stage you may also have to have a secondary internet connection so if the primary internet connection fails you may also have to go for a secondary internet connection so these are called as volatile requirements volatile requirements are likely to change during system development or after the system has become operational now 
Now there is a, a concept called requirements management planning. Now what exactly you mean by requirements management planning? It's all about managing and planning your requirements. We have already seen what requirements management is. Now here we are introducing a new word called planning. Planning is all about planning your requirements management. Now it consists of few stages and the first one is called as requirements identification. Now you know that any system will have stakeholders and there are many stakeholders and each stakeholder can give umpty number of uh, requirements. Now all those requirements has to be documented. So when we document all those requirements and put it in a proper format, we are actually generating something called as requirement traceability matrix. Now what does this requirement traceability matrix contain? Now you can see that it is a table which basically consists of uh, many columns but I have only used three columns for your reference. It will contain a column called stakeholder, it will contain a column called requirement ID and it will contain the column called description. So the stakeholder is a manager here, his requirement ID is 1.0 and what requirement he has got has to be mentioned in the description. So now in this way you can basically give unique identification numbers to all the requirements by looking at that particular requirement you know what is the description of that particular requirement and you also come to know who gave that particular requirement. So in that way by seeing the description you can actually trace who is the stakeholder who has actually given that particular requirement. Now apart from uh, identification the management plan also has got you know change management process. Now what is a change management process? It is an activity to check impact and cost of changes. Now we shall deal with uh, this change management process uh, uh, in a couple of minutes from now. But at this point just understand that a change management is a process which will be initiated as soon as there is a change in the requirement. The next thing would be called as uh, traceability policies. What are traceability policies? Information about relationship between requirements. Now you have multiple requirements which are actually given by various stakeholders. You need to identify the relationship between any two requirements. That is very important. It is called as identifying relationships or identifying dependency, determination of dependencies which we call it as relationship between requirements. Now let me take a simple uh, example here. Now uh, you want to actually uh, bake a cake. Okay, or you want to cook a cake, let us take it in that sense. Now cooking a cake has got, uh, uh, you know, two sets of uh, requirements. One is baking a cake and the second one is called as an decorating a cake. Now there are two separate requirements. Baking a cake uh, has follows a separate process and decorating a cake follows a separate process. Now just uh, look at this particular uh, picture here. Now you can see that this decoration of cake can only start after the baking of the cake is complete. Unless and until your baking of the cake is complete and if the cake has become cool, you cannot go ahead with this particular requirement of decorating the cake. So now we can say that these two requirements are tied together using start to finish relationship. Now what is start to finish relationship? Decoration of cake can only start after baking of the cake has been finished. Now look at uh, one more example which I have given here. You have fixed bathroom fittings and plumbing work. Now in this case what is happening is again there are two requirements. It is basically requirements for constructing a house. Now bathroom fittings has to be fitted and plumbing work also has to be completed. Now in this case you don't have to complete the complete uh, finishing of bathroom fittings and then start with the plumbing work. You can actually do 50% of bathroom fittings and after that parallelly you can start with plumbing of work. So now we can say that these two requirements are having start to start relationship which means plumbing work can actually start after the fixed bath fittings requirement has already started. So this is called as a traceability policy. I have just taken an example of a cake and a bathroom fitting here but in real uh, world where you are developing a software application there could be thousands of requirements or lakhs of requirement. You have to identify uh, what is the dependency between the requirements. Now, it's not going to be an easy task, it's a very daunting task indeed. Okay. Now. Uh, I told you that uh, I am going to deal with uh, requirements change management. Now what exactly is requirements change management? Requirements change management talks about how do you manage changes in the 
requirement. Now, changes can happen anytime during the system development process or changes to the requirement can also come once the system is working and operational. Now, once the system is working and operational, the end user may basically sense a problem. He senses the system and checks out that there has to be some change in this particular system. Now, either he senses a change where the system is malfunctioning at some particular point or he would actually sense a change that the system needs an improvement. Why he senses a change where the system needs an improvement because there is a change in the organizational policy or there could be changes in some business rules where he wants to incorporate the new business rule into the system. Now this if it is initiated then it is called as problem analysis and change specification. That means you need to really understand why that problem has come in and why do you want to initiate the change. The moment you basically initiate this then we have to do a stage called change analysis and costing. See if somebody change, if the end user of the system comes and changes, please go and introduce these new changes into the system. You as a software engineer cannot, in, cannot immediately introduce the changes. Uh, you need to have to really analyze what could be the impact of those changes on your existing system. That is called as change analysis. Now change analysis is also sometimes called as impact analysis. For example, now you have some 15 requirements which are already there in your system and suddenly the end user will come and say that I want two more requirements to be added and the requirement number 5 has to be modified. Now you cannot simply accept that. If you simply accept that you don't know what is going to be the impact of those change requirements on your existing system because you may have to change the design. Now if you have to change the design you don't know what and all effects it will have on the other uh, designs of your entire system. So we need to really make an impact of those changes on the entire system and naturally the change is going to cost me. You cannot simply do the changes free of cost because you will have to call a design engineer and ask him to uh, redo the design. You may also have to call a test engineer once again and ask him to test whether that particular change is really working properly or not. You may also even have to call a programmer and say that incorporate the change. So again you will have to bring in people, you will have to pay them extra money and incorporate those changes. So every change basically introduces either extra cost, it will also introduce more timelines to that particular project which means your project will get extended. So in order to uh, avoid this, in order to ensure that it is planned in a proper way, you need to have a board. It is called as a change control board. Now change control board is a board where you have number of people who have been nominated as the members of that particular board. Now they will take a decision whether you have to really incorporate the change or not. So that means there, this board will basically make suggestions that okay, this particular change the customer has requested, we will go ahead and incorporate this change or sometimes they will directly tell the customer that we will not be able to incorporate this change. If you want to really incorporate this change, this will cost you so much amount of money. So that is called as change analysis and costing. Now once this stage is done, then we actually go for change implementation. Now what is change implementation? Implementing whatever changes you have actually done and ensuring that you get the software deliverable because of the change request. Okay. Thank you so much uh, for uh, watching this particular uh, section on uh, requirements management. Uh, I will see you in my uh, next session where I am going to talk to you on types of requirements and also we will see uh, what are the evolution and different viewpoint of requirements. Till then take care. Please subscribe to our uh, channel SP Tech on YouTube and don't forget us to like on SP Tech BANG. If you have any questions and queries, you can always uh, put us a message in on my Facebook page. Thank you so much and uh, have a pleasant day. Bye-bye.